Windows 11 is here, and like it or love it, it's the next generation of Windows from Microsoft. This isn't just a small upgrade or an iteration of Windows 10. This is a completely redesigned Windows. And with that redesigned Windows, you'll want to make sure that your applications work with Windows 11 as they did with Windows 10. And also, it comes with some additional hardware requirements that you may have heard about. You've heard others' opinions of Windows 11, but you want to make that decision yourself. But you don't want to upgrade your main machine in fear that something won't work, or you don't have the hardware requirements in order to install Windows 11. This is where virtualization comes in. If you're running a hypervisor or a virtualization engine, you're able to virtualize Windows 11 and give it a test drive before you actually move to it. This allows you to test your software and even your hardware to make sure that Windows 11 is going to be right for you when you do upgrade. Or maybe you just want to give Windows 11 a test drive and form your own opinion about Windows 11. Up until now, it's been pretty challenging to virtualize Windows 11. That's because of the new TPM 2.0 requirement. Now, TPM stands for Trusted Platform Module, and Microsoft now requires TPM 2.0 with this for Windows 11. This is a pretty important building block for security-related features in Windows 11 and moving forward. It's used for things like Windows Hello for identity protection, and even BitLocker to keep your drives encrypted and safe. And the same module that's keeping things safe is also making it challenging to upgrade to Windows 11. This has also made it very challenging to virtualize this without some hacks. But if you're virtualizing with Proxmox, it's a lot easier now. Proxmox now has a virtual TPM 2.0 chip. This virtual module allows you to install and run Windows 11 as if it's on a physical machine, making it much easier for you to run and install and evaluate Windows 11 and form your own opinions about it yourself. So today, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to install and virtualize Windows 11 on Proxmox. We're going to configure it according to Proxmox's best practices. We're also going to add the virtual TPM chip, and we're going to install and configure all the necessary drivers for you to run Windows 11. And we're going to do all that with zero hacks. So. What do you need? Well, the first thing you're going to need is Proxmox as your hypervisor. If you need help setting up Proxmox, I got lots of guides on setting that up. And worth mentioning, you'll need to be running Proxmox 7 for this to work. And if you need help upgrading that, I've got a guide on that too. The next thing you'll need is the Windows 11 ISO. Now, you can download this from Microsoft. All you have to do is go out to their site and download the Windows 11 disk or ISO. Once you have that, you'll want to upload that to Proxmox. Now, you can upload this wherever you store your ISO images. Once you choose your storage, select ISO images and then click Upload. Then, you can just upload the ISO to Proxmox. The next thing you'll want to do is download the latest Vert.io driver disk. This gives us drivers so we can set up Windows 11 while virtualizing it on Proxmox. The best way I've found to download this is to download it directly from their GitHub page. Here, we'll find a link to download the latest Win ISO. Then, once that's downloaded, you'll want to do the same thing and upload this to ISO images. So we'll click Upload, we'll choose that ISO, and we'll upload it. Once those are uploaded, let's create a virtual machine. So on your Proxmox node that you want to create this on, you'll right-click and click Create VM. In the General section, we'll want to name this. I'm just going to name mine Windows 11. In the OS section, we'll now want to choose our boot disk of Windows 11, and we'll change the Guest OS to Microsoft Windows. You'll want to make sure that the version here is set to the latest one. Now, this one still points to Windows 10, but this one also works. In the future, they might update it if things change. Next, we'll want to choose System. In here, we'll want to make sure our SCSI controller is Vert.io SCSI. Then, we'll want to turn on the QEMU guest agent. We'll configure that later. For the BIOS, we'll want to make sure that it's UEFI. And for storage, we'll now pick the location of that UEFI disk. And generally speaking, it should be the same location that we store this virtual machine's primary drive on. So I'll choose FAST10. Next is that TPM chip we talked about. So here's how we add support for TPM. It's as simple as clicking this checkbox, Add TPM, choosing a location to store this TPM module, which you'll want to choose the same location as your VM's primary storage. So I'm choosing FAST10 again. And then making sure the version is set to 2.0. Here, we'll also want to change the machine type to Q35. And this looks good, so let's go on to hard disk. For the bus device, I usually set to vert.io block. 
And for the disk size, Microsoft claims that the minimum is 64 gigs. I've tried it with 32, it works, but we'll set it to 64 here. Then we'll leave the rest of the settings as default. Next, we'll select CPU. And here we'll choose how many cores we want. Now, Microsoft recommends two or more cores. So I'm gonna give mine 24. And for CPU type, you can leave it to the default, but I typically choose host here, which is the very last entry. So that will just pass through the CPU type from the host machine down to the guest. And I typically do that because it will pass through all of the features that it needs to to the guest machine. And this is generally a safe bet unless you're moving virtual machines between two Proxmox hosts that have different CPU types. So again, host is usually a safe bet. And that's all we're choosing for CPU. Next, we'll go to memory. And for this machine, I'm just gonna give it eight gigs of RAM. Now you can choose whether or not you want ballooning on. And this is really just an optimization for memory for your server. It gives you the option to either reclaim some of that unused RAM or over provision this if you don't have enough RAM. I generally keep it on. And for network, you'll just choose which network you want it to connect to. I only have one bridge, so that's where I'm going to connect it. And then for the model, I usually choose vert IO again. Then we can go to confirm. And if all of this looks good, we can click finished. Now we don't want to start the VM yet. There's one more thing we need to do. So let's click finish. And we can see here, this machine is now created. So let's open it up and let's go into hardware and let's add one more device, a CD slash DVD drive. Now, the reason we're doing this is because we want to mount the driver disc, the vert IO disc that we downloaded to this device when it boots up so we can supply drivers to it. So let's choose that vert IO disc and click create. And there we go. So now we're ready to start this machine up. So let's start it. Click okay there. So this is a good sign, we see Proxmox here. This means it's using UEFI, which we need. Otherwise you would see the Windows logo in a Windows boot screen. And here we go, so let's set up Windows. Click next, install now. Next you'll need to supply your key. So this is up to you, well, I can't give you one. But if you don't have your key, you can actually enter it later. So we'll do that, say I don't have a product key. Then we'll choose our version of Windows. Be sure you choose the version of Windows that you have a key for. Otherwise, you'll have to do this all over. So the key I have is for Windows 11 Pro. Let's click Next. Agree if you agree. And let's do a custom installation here. So you notice it can't find any of our drives. Well, we need to load those drivers. So let's click Load Driver, and we'll browse to this disk, and look for the Vert IO driver, and then choose the AMD 64 folder, and here, choose Windows 10. Odd, I know, but choose Windows 10. Then we'll see our SCSI controller so we can get our drives. So let's click next. And now we can see we have our drive. So here's our 64 gig drive. We can also load some additional drivers. Let's do that really quick. So the only one I'm gonna load for now is our network driver. And we can do that by selecting our vert IO disk again, selecting NetKVM, and then selecting Windows 10, and then selecting AMD 64. And now it found our network driver. Let's click next. Okay, so now we can hit next. And now it's gonna do the traditional Windows install. Copy files, reboot a few times, and then start with the greeting screen. So let's just wait for this. Okay, so now it needs to reboot. So here's the first reboot. Now it's getting the machine ready. Now it's rebooting one more time. And here we go, Windows 11. So first, we'll select our country. I'm in the United States. Then we'll select our keyboard layout. Again, mine's US. Whether or not we want to add a second keyboard layout, skip that. Now it's going to check for some updates and pull them down and apply them if needed. This is also why we configured the network driver during the initial setup, so that it can pull down any updates it needs to the installation in the beginning rather than later on. Now we can name our device. Then it's gonna reboot and apply some updates. Next, we'll choose how we wanna use this device. In most cases, we're gonna set it up for personal use. But if you're using it for work or school, you would choose this other option. Then you can choose whether or not you wanna add a Microsoft account. I'm gonna choose a different way and say an offline account. Then it's gonna ask you again if you wanna use a Microsoft account. I'm gonna skip this for now. Then we'll enter our name. So I'm setting my name, then a password. 
then confirm our password, then a security question, then another security question, and yet another security question. Next, we're gonna choose our privacy settings. So this is gonna be up to you, whether or not you wanna include location, whether or not you wanna turn on Find My Device, whether or not you wanna send diagnostics data, inking and typing, and if you want your experience tailored to you. Then whether or not you wanna supply an advertising ID. This is used for apps so that they can target you with more relevant advertisements. And then we can click Accept. Checking for updates again. Now our intro screen while it tidies some things up. Almost there. Hey, there we go. So here's Windows 11. Now I've only seen Windows 11 about two times. So this is my second time only seeing it. Big changes, big changes to the start menu and big changes everywhere. But we're not done configuring it just yet. So we need to add some additional drivers. If we right click the new start button and go to device manager, we'll see that we're missing some drivers for some of our devices. Now we could go through and handpick each of these individually and search for drivers on that disk, but the Vert IO disk supplies an installer. So let's use that. So let's open Windows Explorer. Let's choose that Vert IO disk. Let's scroll down and choose the Vert IO Win GT 64 bit driver disk. Let's click next. I accept. Make sure that all of these are selected and click install. Then say yes and click install. And if we take a peek at the device manager while this is going, you'll see that these are starting to get installed and identified. And it's done already. So let's actually reboot now that we have that working. However you reboot, right here, restart. And here we go. Sign in. And let's check our device manager one more time, just to make sure that all of our drivers are installed. And they are. And Windows 11 is now fully configured. Now I could give you a demo of Windows 11, but I'm sure you've seen plenty of them. And if you haven't, you should give it a test drive yourself. Because after installing and configuring all of this, you can test your hardware and pass it through to this device if you like, or test your software and applications to make sure they still work with Windows 11. And that's how easy it is to get started with Windows 11 and Proxmox. Now that we can virtualize the TPM chip, we can install Windows 11 without any hacks whatsoever, giving you the ability to install, configure, and test, and even run Windows 11 on Proxmox. So what do you think of Windows 11? What do you think of the new taskbar? Are you going to upgrade to Windows 11 or just stay on Windows 10 just a little bit longer? If so, let me know in the comments below. And remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. But if I ever got in a position like that too, I would be scared. I, I mean, I don't even know what to expect anymore. Like I, like I said, I've interviewed at a big company before and it went poorly. It went very bad. I'm not going to lie or sugarcoat. It went very bad and I probably wasted all of their time, but I had zero experience doing that before. Like that was my first like technical interview uh, where you're whiteboarding or writing pseudocode on a whiteboard and walking trees. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm so not prepared. Even though I read all the crash courses and, and studied, nothing prepares you like actually doing it. So, <laughs> clue to know I've been there, and, and it is scary. <laughs> um,